Hello, so today I wanted to talk about some things that I'm excited about coming up in my language learning as well as plans and hopes for the channel and the community here. So this is kind of a replacement for or maybe a supplement to, I'm not sure, um, 2024 goals or, you know, ongoing plans. Obviously you cannot, uh, schedule excitement. And so, you know, I may be adding to these things in the future. I may be removing some of these things totally dependent on where, um, life takes me. We will start with Spanish. That is, if you are not familiar, my primary language focus uh, has been for several years now. Um, if you're new here, hello, my name is Joe, and I am learning Spanish. Kind of continuing projects that I've already started in Spanish, I do want to continue my reading around the Spanish speaking world project. So I'm trying to read a book, really two books, from every Spanish speaking country in the world, including, you know, territories and colonies like Puerto Rico. So yeah, I am only five in because I keep you know, as soon as I start reading from a country, I discover more <laughs> things that I want to read from that country. So I've read from five countries, but I've also read like five books from a lot of those countries. So this has not necessarily been going at the pace that I thought it would, but it has been wonderful and I cannot wait to keep going and to read from some other countries that I haven't even, you know, heard of authors from yet and continue to unlock new realms. I am kind of informally trying to read all of Isabel Allende's books with a uh, an, an Instagram um, acquaintance or friend and so we are kind of just you know randomly when we feel like picking up another Isabel Allende book uh, reading it together I'm very behind on the current one but hoping to finish that very soon and so we've read four I think once I finish this one that will have been the fourth one that we've read and you know she has many many out and she's still um publishing so you know we've got a long way to go but I definitely want to continue to read more of her works I am absolutely loving it Related to that, I want to continue to uh, consume more native Spanish things. I have been kind of uh, investing in some subscriptions and that sort of thing f that will help with that. I have the RTVE Play subscription for uh, Spanish, as in Spain Spanish TV shows primarily. I also recently got a Tres player, I think. Um, so that's another... Uh, Spanish media platform. I got a promotional thing for the El País newspaper for a year subscription for $18. And so I did go ahead and do that because uh, related to a future goal, I want to read more news and that sort of thing. So um, that, you know, was a good way to kind of force myself to do that if I'm paying for it. But, you know, beyond that, obviously, I do want to branch out into other things, uh, certainly more more other countries besides just Spain, and just generally focus on a lot of my media consumption uh, being native Spanish content, which it already is, but, you know, just a continued um, diving deeper into that. I want to finish listening to all of the Radio Ambulante podcast episodes, which uh, has been an ongoing project uh, for a month or so now. Um, so I have finished the 2016, 2017, 2018, and 2019 episodes. Uh, so I will just uh, have to do, you know, 2020, 21, 22, and 23, and uh, continue, you know, keeping up with that, obviously. I really want to work on my Spanish writing. Um, writing is something that I really, really enjoy in English, which is funny since I now have, you know, a YouTube channel and I'm not really active on any writing platforms, but that may change. Um, I may do some kind of blog or substack or something um, in order to practice my Spanish writing. Um, that's definitely something that I'm interested in. I'm also potentially interested in uh, subtitling all of my videos in Spanish as well. Um, not on the video, but having Spanish subtitles. But that's not so much writing as translating, but still, you know, it would potentially give me some practice. Uh, but, you know, I just want to work on that ability to form sentences and arguments and that sort of thing. You know, grammar is certainly a struggle for that. 
But uh, since I'm stronger in writing than in speaking in English, I imagine that will continue into Spanish, as certainly I am better at writing than speaking in Spanish at this point. So yeah, I just want to develop that. Also want to develop that because I do want to take the Dele in uh, 2024, likely the B2 exam. And so that also relates back to the reading El País. I think they use that type of content um, as part of the exam. And so I definitely want to practice that. And, you know, same for practicing writing. That will also feed into that. That's not the only reason I want to do that, but it's certainly a reason. Calling this an excitement is probably an overstatement. Um, I am trying to make it more exciting for myself. I want to travel to somewhere for the exam, whether that would be, you know, New York City or somewhere out of the country, I'm not sure. But, you know, I want to make it a good experience for myself. Um, but, you know, I don't really ascribe to language levels or language exams as a general rule. So it's not like I'm like, woo, I can't wait to take this exam. But I am looking forward to, you know, working towards it and hopefully um, achieving it, whether that's on the first try or not, you know, we will see. But yeah. Uh, I would like to finish all of the Babbel Live Spanish classes. So they have approximately 30 B1 classes, B2 classes, and C1 classes. And I want to just take all of them. I have the subscription, so I just want to take all of them. And probably some of them I will end up repeating. I also want to do a lot more of the Langolia courses. Again, I have the subscription through somewhere around July, maybe, of next year. And so I want to use the um, CEFR, I always say that wrong, CEFR courses, obviously to help prepare for the DELE and everything, but um, they also have more culturally grounded courses, you know, they have like podcasts uh, about Spain that talk about the culture and just kind of the day-to-day -day life of Spain, and they also have one about Latin America where each country gets its own episode. There are a lot of courses on there that I do want to take and I want to make sure that I get my money's worth out of that subscription. Although to be honest, I sort of feel like I already have, but definitely want to use that a lot. Uh, so moving on to other languages. So the first thing is that I want to actually study French. Um, instead of just constantly saying that I am sort of studying French and very rarely actually doing anything. So I was very inspired by a recent video from Someday Korean. Madison did a thing where she was initially going to try to read every day in Japanese for an hour, I think, um, for three months. And so it kind of, you know, the project kind of morphed from there. But I think that that would be something that would help me so much with French and I do think I now have found the resources that I could do that with so I really want to probably not an hour but I'm thinking maybe 20 minutes do 20 minutes of reading every day in French for three months and see how that how that goes. I really do think that I could sustain it um, and I've kind of been putting it off now until I just get back from Spain because you know that makes sense. Um, but I want to make sure that I actually do it instead of just constantly saying I'm going to do it. So as of the filming of this video, I have not been to Spain yet. Um, and then, you know, some of these may have shifted or there may be new things or, you know, priorities may have slightly changed. But as of right now, I'm extremely interested in the other languages of Spain, the other official languages and dialects of those, um, and the history of the those different regions, kind of the separatist movements, the independence movements that have happened, um, and just kind of all of that. I'm very interested in the Basque language, you know, since it is one of the only like isolate languages um, left in the world. I think that's so interesting. I have read some books that talk a lot about Basque culture, um, but you know, I know that that has been a massive thing in the history of Spain that I know absolutely nothing about. And similarly, um, you know, I've been dabbling a little bit in Catalan here and there. I have watched shows that have have um, Galician and Aragonese in them and I yeah I'm just so interested in these languages and I definitely want to you know dabble in the languages learn more about the history of the different regions and everything and yeah so that's definitely a major interest of mine I also am very interested in 
indigenous languages from other Spanish, you know, colonies. Um, but certainly, you know, there are so many that I'm not even sure where to begin. And since I'm going to Spain, that's kind of more, um, you know, pressing in my mind, but I absolutely am very interested and I always love resources that talk about that. So if you have any documentaries, books, anything to recommend, definitely leave them in the comments. I also would love to start a new language in 2024. Um, I would like to start one that is kind of not super related to English or Spanish or French, um, despite, you know, also wanting to dabble in all these really closely related languages that I was talking about earlier. You know, I was kind of thinking that Mandarin would probably be my next language, but... I'm super tempted by a whole bunch of other ones. You know, Mandarin is very high on the list, but so is Arabic. Russian occasionally pops up as something I'm super interested in, and same with Turkish. So really, I do think likely Mandarin or Arabic, but yeah, very, very interested in starting something else, kind of a big um, overwhelming project next year just because I am so interested in how the process of learning will be different with something that, you know, is not super closely related and likely will have a different alphabet. You know, obviously Turkish does not have a fully different alphabet, but you know what I mean. Very enticed by all of those languages, so I'd like to, yeah, start something. So that's all for other languages because I'm being realistic here, maybe. I don't know how realistic you can call that when I haven't even be, been able to add in French, let alone a completely unrelated language. On to kind of platform ideas. One thing is that I do want to keep doing the language challenges. Obviously, we've been on a little bit of a hiatus. November kind of would have been the natural month to do another one in, but I don't really have time with going to Spain um, and, you know, trying to get ready for that. So, uh, we will be back. I want to kind of make it maybe like an every other month thing because I find them really inspiring and it's a really great way to interact with other people and not it just be me in front of the camera, you know, talking. So if you have ideas, definitely leave them below. Obviously they will be credited if I, um, use any of them, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I have ideas, but I also would love to do the things that you guys, uh, want to do. I am I'm thinking of starting a Patreon, um, so if you have things that you would like to see out of that, you know, obviously kind of book clubs are the natural uh, progression of my content, and that could be, you know, like a Spanish-specific one and a really widely translated book one so that we could try to all read the same book regardless of what language that we're studying. Obviously, that c can get pretty difficult, uh, but, you know, it would be worth a try if people are interested in it. And this would certainly be something that I would try to keep uh, affordable. Obviously, that's completely relative, but I don't ever want people to feel like they have to invest large amounts of money in uh, supporting my content. But, you know, leading into that, kind of the other update for my platform is that I am very close to being monetized on YouTube. I'm not sure whether I will be by the time this video goes public or not, but I am very close. So, uh, usually my videos have ads anyway because YouTube, um, adds ads to all videos now. So there, you shouldn't notice any change. I won't be adding mid video ads or anything like that, um, but that does give me the opportunity to do things like fundraisers, like where maybe I do a study with me video where we kind of do like Pomodoro method, but the ad breaks um, are, you know, at the appropriate break times, and then that might be something where I could, you know, donate the profits from that video, which would, I'm sure, be extremely small, but I could add to them myself and that sort of thing. So, that will be an ongoing opportunity, uh, but I have decided, at least as of this point, um, until further notice, um, you know, it is in my profile now on YouTube that I have decided that I will not be accepting sponsorships as a YouTuber. I want to be able to talk about whatever I want to talk about on my platform. I don't want to create an income stream that I am dependent on that is dependent on me 
being palatable to advertisers. I'll talk more about that um, in a moment, but also I also don't want people to have to worry about whether my reviews of things are honest, and I'm not dissing people who take sponsorships at all, and I know that it sounds like I am, but I'm absolutely not. Basically, I don't think that taking sponsorships is any morally different than having a job. It's the same thing, but for me, YouTube is a thing that is outside of my job, and so I have the opportunity to create this community here where you know, ideally, I would like to uh, make some of the money back that I'm investing, but I don't want to do that at the cost of what I want this community to be. You know, like it's not my day job and it doesn't have to be my day job. If it at some point became my day job, that would be wonderful. That would be a dream, but I would want it to be exactly the way I want it to be then, if that makes sense. So, you know, that to me is not... Uh, being paid by companies to talk about their products like that's just not my ideal vision for what I would want this platform to be so anyway that carries into my next point uh, which is that I want to be more political and that may uh, be a very unpopular opinion goodbye to everyone um, unsubscribing right now but um You know, overall, I think on most of my platforms, I am extremely political, but this is probably my least political one, as evidenced by the fact that I immediately lost like 20 subscribers when I posted about Palestine. And, you know, that's a relatively small amount of subscribers. I know, you know, I'm not concerned about it whatsoever. Even if it was a large amount, I wouldn't be concerned about it. But it was a reminder to me that because I'm talking about a specific subject on here, you know, I don't necessarily talk about politics as much on here as I do on Instagram. And so I just want to um, incorporate that more. Um, You know, language learning is not something that we do in isolation, however much we may feel like we do because we're using, you know, resources and that sort of thing that sometimes do really separate language learning from culture or at best sometimes incorporate a very surface level Um, aspect of culture. But, you know, all of this is deeply intertwined, and I will admit that I have been very disappointed in kind of the general, the general participation in uh, social things of the language learning community as a whole. And I'm not calling anyone out here. This is not me saying that people have to use their platforms. But I would say of the communities that I kind of generally inhabit, the language learning community has been some of the most silent about any social, political, cultural issues. Like, it is overwhelmingly people feeling like they should just sit this one out (laughs) for everything. And so that's something that I want to do much more proactively now, since I'm kind of realizing that sort of totally accidentally. I hadn't been doing that necessarily. Maybe just passing in passing here and there in vlogs and that sort of thing. So, you know, along with what I was saying earlier about like fundraisers and that sort of thing, that's usually going to be for social and political things that I feel strongly about. If I start learning languages that have, you know, sociopolitical uh, things going on, that's going to be a part of it. I want it to be more a part of when I talk about Spanish, which obviously has massive sociopolitical things going on at all times because all languages do. English does also, obviously. And so I just want to make sure that that part of my morality, that part of like my life philosophy and of who I want to be is being accurately reflected here, and that's a huge part of why I will not be taking sponsorships. So with that being said, the major inspiration for this was a um, TikTok and Instagram and Substack and podcast creator. Everything will be on the screen, but her name is Ismatu Gwendolyn, I think. And so, yeah all credit, all inspiration to her. Um, I mean, this was stuff that I'd thought about before, but she, her um, podcast on the subject really helped me flesh out my opinions about it because there are things that I disagree with her about. Um, not that I disagree with her about, but we just have different 
final stances on it. Like personally, I don't have a problem with affiliate links as long as they are not being used as a sales technique. I will never be encouraging or pressuring people to use an affiliate link. But for me, oftentimes, not always, but often they are mutually beneficial, like you get a discount and I get a little kickback or whatever. So if I'm talking about something that I genuinely think is good, then I don't have a problem with including an affiliate link in case someone wants to purchase it anyway. But I'm never going to choose things based on whether there's an affiliate link. Like, you know, most of the things that I talk about all the time, like RTVE, uh, Langolia, all of those kind of things. I don't have an affiliate link. I don't, I don't think those even exist. Um, but I don't have a problem with including them. But anyway, this has gotten totally off track. Uh, this wasn't the point of this video, but I did want to mention it here because it is relevant to kind of my thought process as the year moves forward and as I do kind of get into potentially, hopefully, the monetization phase of this um, channel. So hopefully that was not too long and rambly and um, I would love to hear about the things that you are excited about in your upcoming language journey. It doesn't have to be just 2024, but it could be tomorrow. It could be five years from now. I just would love to know what is exciting you in the future and I will see you in the next video.